let's have a look at the distributive law and division. If we're asked to simplify something like 6x plus 2 over 2, one way we can think about it is to think that dividing by 2 is just the same as multiplying by a half. And so what we've got is half times 6x plus 2. This means we can just use the distributive law we've always been using. Half times 6x gives me 3x, and a half times plus 2 gives me plus 1. So what we're seeing is that when we've got 6x plus 2 over 2, we're going to distribute in the same way we're going to have 2 dividing into the 6x as well as 2 dividing into the plus 2. So division works just like multiplication in this regard. So we can go through it in a short way without having to go through multiplication and just say the 2 needs to divide into the 6x and that gives us 3x and the 2 needs to divide into the plus 2 and give us plus 1. So this is how we use distri the distributive law when we're working with division. It works in the same way that multiplication worked. And that makes sense because multiplication and division are closely related to each other. So let's have a look at a more revolting example. If we were asked to simplify something like this, well again, we just need to make sure that that negative 3x squared at the bottom divides into each and every piece at the top, each and every term at the top. So negative 3x squared must divide into 6x cubed. 6 divided by negative 3 gives me negative 2, and x cubed over x squared is just x, so I've got negative 2x. Then I need to divide minus 9x squared by minus 3x squared. Negative divided by negative gives me positive, 9 divided by 3 gives me 3, and x squared over x squared gives me 1, so I've got plus 3. So this is the distributive law for division. It's very important to remember this distributive law for division, that the term at the bottom needs to divide into each and every term at the top of the action. Because it's very tempting when you're faced with something like this to say, oh, let me cancel the 3 with the 3 and say the answer is 2x. But this is wrong because that 3 at the bottom should have cancelled with each and every term on the top. So we can't do it like this. What we'd have to do instead is to say the 3 must divide into the 3. That gives me 1. And then I've got the 3 dividing into the 2x. Hmm, that's not going to work out very neatly, but that's fine. I can just write it as plus 2x over 3. The important thing to see here is that 3 at the bottom divides into each term at the top. So if you see a fraction where in the top, the numerator, you've got things added together or subtracted from each other, remember that the denominator must divide into each and every one of those terms. The story with multiplication is different. If the two things at the top are multiplied together, um, and again, multiplication and division are closely related, so here you haven't got different terms at the top that are added or subtracted from each other, here you can cancel with the 3 with the 3 and be left with 2x. No problem if you're multiplying. But if your numerator has adding or subtracting, you must use the distributive law.